unpleasantly surprised when I came out of the airport and it was like the same temperature as my refrigerator back in Nigeria. So I was just like, I'm Vanessa Canby and as you will have seen in my last videos, I recently just moved back to Scotland with my two children, my husband. I've actually been back for a few weeks. As you can see, I've got my jacket on at all times. I'm getting my hair done today, so I just washed it last night, put it in these plaits. I am here with Aisha Janki. She's doing my son's hair at the moment. Aisha moved from Nigeria to Ghana, actually, and is now living in Edinburgh at university, doing architecture. So I thought, you know, I'd let you guys meet her and have a love of my life here in Scotland. Hi guys, um, thank you so much for such an interesting info. You managed to make me seem like a much bigger deal than I am. Um, I did move from Nigeria about four years ago now. I'm in my fifth year of university, but such a great pleasure filming this with you, Vanessa. Oh, and I can't thanks. wait, I can't wait to show you guys um, a, bit, a, a, bit about, a bit about myself and um, just have a conversation really. So how was that? Okay, so you obviously, you used to live in Nigeria. Whereabouts in Nigeria? Are you um, from? I used to live in Sokoto States, which is in like northern Nigeria. There's a lot of like Hausa tribe there. Are you Hausa? I'm not Hausa actually, but in Ajang Hausa, so I speak Hausa. Oh, um, cool. But my parents are Yoruba, so. Oh, I'm nice. Yoruba, Do you also like, speak like, Yoruba? Mogo Yoruba, so. I oh, okay. Speak Yoruba too. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so, what made you decide? out of all the places in the world to move to Edinburgh in Scotland? Good question. I, I ask myself every day, especially now that the winter is coming, I ask myself every day, what was I thinking? Like, <laughs> packing my bags um, and coming all the way to like Scotland. Well, I mean, I could, have, I could have gone to London. My parents still think I study in London because that's <laughs> the part of England that they know. Um, but for me, it was a career move, it was an educational move, it was a social mobility move. Um, I, I got a scholarship from the MasterCard Foundation um, to study architecture, which is something I'd always wanted to do. Um, and it was, it was a multi-million dollar opportunity, of course I was going to jump on it. Um, I'm not a millionaire yet. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> Watch this space. <laughs> Yeah, it was to to start studying um, architecture at at Edinburgh. Um, you mentioned er earlier that I've been to Ghana before. Mm -hmm. That was where I went before I came here. So I first of all got into the African Science Academy, um, which was founded by Dr. Tom Ilube. So let me actually right? just let me actually just say that I interviewed Dr. Tom, and I will actually upload that video very very soon and i'll link it in the description below he is such an inspirational incredible man um and yeah obviously you got to go to his cool. school i decided that i would build my school the africa science academy in west africa and i chose ghana as the place that we would uh, we would build that so my idea is that if i can find brilliant academically gifted young women from all over africa bring them into an amazing educational experience where they focus on science and technology at a really world-class level, genuinely world-class level. Uh, and then they go off and do their degrees in computer science, mathematics, engineering, and so forth. And then they come back and make a contribution that that could have a real impact that would ripple across the whole continent. Um, I, I, I went to the African Science Academy in Ghana and you guys should check it out if if you're a young girl from from africa who's interested in like improving yourself and just like becoming a better version of yourself that is the place to be um but for me like that was what really opened so many doors for me because once i went to 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 ghana and i was studying for my a levels then that just widened my horizon a lot more because i could aspire to like study abroad i could aspire to apply for more scholarships because I already had a precedent of, 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 of doing that. I kind of knew a bit more about who I was because there were so many opportunities for me to listen to, to other people and get inspired and work out like what I want to do, do, do with my life and like how I can make an impact. So it was, it was a no-brainer. Like when I heard that I got 
the scholarship um i was like i was elated i was so excited i mean i was i was only 16 at the time wow. um you were 16 then but you said you'd actually finished school when you were before that in nigeria at what age so i was 15 years old when i finished senior high school oh my nigeria. gosh wow like that's, that's normal okay, oh is it genius, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but is it actually normal? Um, to a very large extent, it is. Well, how um, did you actually hear about the African Science Academy? I was studying, trying to be a studio student. One of my teachers walked in. He wanted to speak to all of the female students who were studying um, for the maths. And it just so happened that there were only two of us i believe or was it three i'm not so sure but i just know that in a class of like tens of people there was only like you, you could count how many women were there oh right um, okay because because of so many reasons like i don't know um but it just so happened that i was one of them and and he called us out and he told us this opportunity to go and study in ghana fully funded scholarship he just sold the whole thing and i was just out there like i love ghana I like the accents that my cousin had when she came to visit <laughs> from Ghana. Like, of course I want to go to Ghana. So that was how I heard heard about it. And I went on to, to tell my dad. He was so supportive about um, the whole process. So obviously I had to apply and I had to sit an entrance exam. And I'm really summarizing it because like that oh, was took a, a long time. Yeah, that was a pivotal time in my life because like I I wasn't as wise as i am now but i i just knew that i had a dream i just knew that i was like trying to be better i knew that i was aspiring to do bigger and better things than than what was available to me just in the scope of sokoto state i knew i wanted to be um a global citizen and there there it was an exciting opportunity to actually realize that dream so mm -hmm. i jumped on it and like it would it, it wouldn't have been able to afford it and that was part of the reason why i was so excited because then that meant i could relieve my parents of having to pay like school fees oh, um, right, for yeah. another year or having to worry about my um higher education fee as well um so yeah like i said earlier it was a social mobility move for me mm -hmm. um i only knew about the uk from books i only knew about i hadn't heard about scotland like I, oh, really? I, I wow. never knew I, I i knew england okay and i thought that was it even yeah. wales i was like what is wales where is wales it was when i came here somebody sat me down and gave me the whole lecture of, so this is that and this is this and this is where the wales is and blah 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 so isn't that interesting that not that long ago you didn't even know about scotland and now here you are here i am <laughs> braiding people's hair in scotland ridiculous <laughs> Um, okay, so then you decided uh, you went to um, the school in Ghana for a year. Was it a year's program? Yes. So fast forward to a couple months later when the um, the Mastercard scholarship opened for any um, applicant, the school was asked to nominate three of their best students who would apply in the first um, wave. Okay. Of applicants and um i was chosen as one of them and then do you get to choose your university and what you want to study uh so it was specifically for the university of edinburgh they had a partnership thing with with the school that i went to with the african science academy um so when i was applying i knew i was applying to the mastercard scholarship at edinburgh but they do okay. have um scholarships like across the, the continent but also across the world they so now we're going from at the actual move so did you go back to nigeria from ghana or you went straight from ghana to edinburgh so once i graduated um from from ghana i went back to nigeria briefly and then i packed everything said goodbye to my family and then i went to the uk my parents couldn't come with me so it was just me and i hadn't been to the open day or anything so i didn't really know how cold it was until my first day in edinburgh <laughs> did you come with a jacket and things like that no i i i wore ankara and it was a very beautiful dress it was like a green um like fitted top and and a skirt 
you know, like with the flay thing in the bottom. Like I, I dressed to impress, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I didn't have a jacket. Didn't think I needed one. <laughs> so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised, not unpleasantly surprised when I came <laughs> out of the plane, when I came out of the airport and it was like the same temperature as my refrigerator <laughs> back in Nigeria. So I was just like, what have I signed up for? And it only got worse because that was September. Yeah, I know that's that like relatively so okay. That was fine. So what was your thoughts? Obviously it was cold, but just the differences of living in West Africa to now living in Scotland. <laughs> oh, cultural shock. Do you mean the culture yeah. the many cultural shocks that I experienced? Uh, so I was I was living in um in a catered hall when i came so it was so exciting at first like i walked in it was like a buffet style dining and i walked in with, with my ankara i was like you know representing nigeria so <laughs> i went there was there was burgers there was salad there was so say all the nice <laughs> things that you read about so i was very very excited but um the variety started to um, started to dawn on me because, like, eventually, like, I was craving jollof rice and I was craving Nigerian food, and because it was a catered hall, I, I couldn't actually cook that myself. Oh. So the first cultural shock was like the food option. It wasn't until like three years later that we now have a Nigerian restaurant, like a Nigerian food restaurant in Edinburgh, where I could actually eat. Nigerian food but, and it's been a crazy journey like actually figuring out like where to buy Amala if I wanted Amala or where to buy yam if I wanted to cook yam and so on and so forth um, And yeah. what's the Nigerian restaurant that you go to here? The Nigerian, it's called Uwagoi Where is it? It's on Leith Walk Okay They are delivery, they are Uber Eats Oh nice I think they are pretty much everyone And when did it open? Out. Um, I I think they opened like during the pandemic. Okay, something. yeah, because I was gonna say obviously I just yeah, moved back, so it's, it's very I've new. not. Because there used to be a Ghanaian restaurant close to where I used to live, but then it closed down. Yeah. And then there was another one, and it closed down. So I'm glad to hear <laughs> about this one. Bless you. And I think this one is here to stay because they're really like they're really invested in like really bringing that culture to to Edinburgh. Oh, amazing. Um, and I've tried your food. It's a bit pricey for students, but it's delicious. Oh, nice. Um, so how? So now time's passed. You've been here for how many years? Five years. It's my fifth year. Wow. Oh, crazy. I I took a I took another gap year because I can afford to. I'm young. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but this time around, um, it was to work full time as a sabbatical officer. Um, so. Because you're still, yeah, you are still young. I, I, I just turned 21 the day before yesterday. I feel like a baby. Oh my gosh, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, and yeah, so you have the time on your hands to be uh, taking these. And also just to build your experience and decide what you really want to do. Absolutely. Um, so do you, what do your parents think of all this? Obviously you live in Edinburgh. You're so far from them. What would, what would you think if, if your son made a big move to like become a better version of himself i mean obviously i'd be so so happy for him yeah. um but i think it could be difficult for me if i couldn't go and see him like i would probably feel quite sad Aww. um yeah i get I, I i get what you mean that's like a part of parenting that's not very fun like when you have to watch them grow and become independent of you um, but thankfully, my parents have so many other kids to <laughs> parents. So right. my my absence wasn't felt at all. Oh. And that's a big fat lie because my mom till today tells me she misses me because oh. I was probably um, I don't think she had a favorite kid, but I I was like. I was a very good girl. So. I love how you're trying to say I don't think she did, but if she did, it would be probably You know, me. like, I was like, I was a good girl. So, you know, I was the one who would wake up and 
fetch water for her and wash her clothes and sweep the house so she felt my absence oh okay? right yeah um but she was very proud of me my dad is very proud of me um that's so nice like like i mentioned earlier like my dad was very supportive when i told him about the opportunity to to, to go to ghana they managed to come to my graduation in ghana as well oh, so that nice. was very exciting and fingers crossed they might be able to come to my graduation here as well so I need to focus and read my books and come and celebrate something. <laughs> but yeah, it's they they're very positive about it. Um and I'm just that's that's the more reason why I'm like I have to work really really hard. I must say, like coming from the community where where I am, like the house of community back in Sokoto State, it's very rare to see parents like allowing their their young daughter like i was like a teenager when i left and i got on the plane myself and they just trusted in me to be a good girl wherever i was going mm -hmm. my god has it not been hard being a good girl here um but we'll save that story for another day um what do you mean by that though it's all distractions so hard. it's so hard here like suddenly i had all this freedom and mm. and like like I was, it was such a pivotal time in my year. I was, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, and my parents were not there to like. What age me. were you when you came here? Sixteen. I so, I, t I turned seventeen. In oh my, right, on, okay. My first day of school, so I was sixteen. Like when I came here. To Edinburgh. Yeah. When I came wow. To you were 16 yeah. when you came to Edinburgh, yeah, to university. When I came to so university. So were you the young, you were most definitely most the youngest definitely. person <laughs> in your class. I mean, to be fair, the Scottish education system, like there were a few other people, but like to be that, to be that young, like just turning 17, I think most of them were already 17 perhaps, mm -hmm. so just about to turn 18. But to just be turning 17 and like, starting uni was pretty pretty rare mm -hmm. so what's the plan now you've been here five years do you want to stay in scotland do you want to stay in the uk or do you have any plans to go back to nigeria what do you want to do scotland is so beautiful and it's such like a dream place to be but we'll see how i feel about the cold a couple of years later <laughs> and i think i think for me like i'm so open-minded and i want to live around the world like i feel like I want to be a global citizen like it's what i've always wanted to do so it wouldn't hurt to maybe explore living somewhere else mm -hmm. and sharing that journey again um i started my youtube um channel with that same vision of like just sharing my journey because i knew that when i was coming like it would have helped to see another nigerian students sharing their story about how they're finding it and warning me at least about the cold because mm -hmm. <sighs> nobody warned you my goodness i had no clue um but yeah that's 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 kind of where i'm going i want to build my youtube platform a bit more i want to braid more people's hair lift your head up you also do henna I right. also do henna. Oh my god, I did it, guys! I did it. <laughs> I finished it. So obviously, yeah, I um, need to get his hair cut. Um, I'll also take you to where I get his hair cut as well because it's actually a really great place, and we've been going there for years. Uh, I actually think um, he's also Nigerian. The guy that cuts my son's hair. You know, what's your top tips for anyone coming from Nigeria to the UK? Do it. You're gonna be so proud you did. Um, but that's like me being the motivational speaker, but also it's not easy. Um, but like nothing in life is gonna be easy. Like there's gonna be cultural shock you're gonna face and you're gonna be away from family and so on and so forth, but you're gonna grow. And isn't that what this life is for? Like growing and becoming better versions of ourselves every single day. So do it, literally, mm -hmm. just do it and have fun um put yourself out there travel around the world if you can afford to i don't know just like live your live life your life, life yeah. is too short okay mm -hmm. it's so short <laughs> and um yeah and i just want to touch just briefly on like racism 
um, because it's something I've spoken about before on my channel about mm. racism in Scotland. Like, is it something that you've faced living here? No, not necessarily. I mean, I was very conscious about the fact that I was different. Like, I stood out like a sore thumb. Could you lift your head up? Because um, when I came, like, I was wearing, like, the full-on hijab and everything. Um, I still do, but um, I tend to wear it as a turban now. I think it's just be be aware that you're probably going to be... An, out, an outlier and just learn to embrace that it's taught me to kind of know why i am the way i am and embrace it but there is no doubt that you're gonna stand out i think there's there's a growing number of black people in edinburgh mm -hmm. um, and that's given me hope for the future and stuff um but yeah I just, oh nice I haven't experienced it necessarily, but I do know people who have. Um, there's always going to be bad apples everywhere you go. And it's not something I've spoken of as well as, as much in Edinburgh. Um, in my university specifically, like less than 1% of the student population is black, for starters. And that was what inspired me to like run for um, a sabbatical officer position, serving as the vice president welfare. So I was elected last year and that was why I took a gap year um, and I did that in a bid to try to kind of raise more awareness around that and try to educate people because a lot of the time, especially here in Scotland, they don't know any better. You're probably like the first Nigerian they've ever met. I mean, that's very rare because Nigerians are everywhere, <laughs> but you know, like they probably could be for a lot of people you know people, to be yeah honest. like if 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 you go to like the remote part of um scotland or if if you're like me and you like the outdoors probably gonna be the only one there you know but that's okay mm -hmm. um just be safe and yeah just do your best to try to be a part of the solution to that but also um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I think it sucks that like we have to worry about racism. Mm -hmm. That's a factor you have to consider when you're moving places or something. Um, but I do have to say, it's it's a lot more positive. Like during the Black Lives Matter protest, there are lots of people who came out to like raise awareness about it. Um, and so there's there's like work going on, but there's always going to be bad people. Mm -hmm. yeah no that's so true. don't don't let that hold you back or like don't let that hold you back because chances are you might not experience it chances are you might but i suppose the probability is very low because mm -hmm. i haven't i mean there's microaggression and i think microaggression tends to come from not knowing any better but like overt racism like being called words not necessary mm -hmm that's great to hear um well not about the microaggressions but yeah. obviously the fact that you've not experienced any direct racism online i'm on instagram as aisha underscore janky for my personal page i'm a fashion model so you see more of that content um and also some content around like my personal experiences and stuff but yeah <laughs> yeah all right thanks so much thanks for doing my son's hair again looks great yeah i need to get it cut then it'll look better but looking good so now aisha's doing my hair <laughs> and um actually this weekend i am so 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 excited I'm actually going back to Ghana. See you guys, all these comments that I've been seeing are very interesting. Thank you so much for all the congratulations on my third baby in my tummy, who's literally trying to break free every day, kicking me from the inside out. This weekend, I'm coming back to Ghana. YouTube is uh, bringing me, I'm getting to see one of my best friends ever, Anna Champong. If you guys don't follow her, where have you been? Uh, I'm so excited to see her. I'm going to see so many creators, Wadi Maya, Miss Trudy. I don't actually know who else is going to be there at the event, but we're going to the Global Citizen event. I saw the lineup for the Global Citizen and I was like, I have to be there. But how am I going to get there? And here, I'm so happy that YouTube's bringing me. So I'll be going there this weekend. So that's why I'm getting my hair braided. Um, I'm literally only going for a couple of days. And yeah, so the next video, I will be at Global Citizen and in Ghana again, and then I'll be coming back. 
And then, yeah, just see where life takes me. Got a few travel plans, I think, for the rest of the year, but I'll update you all once they are solidified. My hair is finished. <laughs> Thanks so much for oh, sharing with welcome. us. Um, had so much fun. And yeah. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, go over to Aisha's channel, subscribe to her channel, and also all the other socials. See you. Bye.